Sam has a has a tendency when we do these in purses to uh, chime in. Oh, cool! And for the longest time, I didn't have a camera on him as well. Right. So anytime, so I was like, you know what? The last time this happened, he chimed in so many times. I was like, all right, we're throwing a camera on you. Nice. And we're not. We don't microphone because I want him to sound like he's off camera right. and stuff. He'll be our little Baba. No, that's Boo. great. Those He'll are great. He'll be our little Baba Booey over here. Well, we're just going to start this conversation. I'm sitting here with Mad, <laughs> with Matt Money Smith, the voice of the Chargers. What's up, man? How you doing today? I'm doing man? great, man. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, thanks stoked, for being here. Stoked to be here. Yeah. Uh, You're well, really trolling me. You got a lot of Raiders. Oh gear yeah, going we're going to get into here. that. Yeah, just exactly. Kidding. We got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to be the fun part of the conversation. Sure. Obviously, we'll get to talk a little bit of shit about some sports, Absolutely. about some teams that. Uh, Obviously, as you can see, I'm a very big Raiders yes, fan. Yes, you are. So, uh, we'll, we'll get into that. But I wanted to uh, start off with the, the connection that we had and uh, how it started was actually through Ted Stryker, who uh, I had him on the show earlier this year. And uh, he mentioned that you were the one that actually showed him uh, my band, Avenged Sevenfold. And then later, he was the one who started playing it on K-Rock, the local station here. And the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, I've had, a, I've had a lot. I've been very, very fortunate. I've had a bunch of careers, um, four, really kind of four careers. Um, I started uh, in the music, in the record business straight out of college. So I was hired by London, uh, FFRR, Moax, and just kind of worked a lot of those records first two years. And then when DreamWorks launched, they hired me. Um, but when I was in college, um, I worked on, I was an intern at Polygram, and I worked on the Kevin and Bean Show. Um, on K-Rock, which is a morning show at, at K-Rock here in Los Angeles. Um, and they have this program director, Kevin Weatherly, who's super smart, um, will never tell you what he thinks of a record until he's talked to like 10 people about the record, and then he'll <laughs> tell you what he thinks about the record. So <laughs> when I was just interning for the morning show, uh, he's like, hey, I hear you, you do stuff at your college station, you know, do you listen to music, can you bring us music? So he pulled me into the the music world, and then of course the second he did that and labels got a sniff of it, you know, and they found out I was graduating, I had a few offers because um, of my connection there. And so, worked at DreamWorks for a bit, um, and that's how I found you guys. We were, DreamWorks was sniffing around. Right, Avenged. I didn't realize you were working out there at the time. Yeah. I didn't know we had some meetings with uh, DreamWorks. I think and it was Ron, others. or was it Luke? I can't remember who was the in our Ron. guy. I think it might have been Ron. I think it was Ron Handler. Handler, that's right, yeah. yeah. so it was uh, Ron. Yeah, uh, when we were out on Warp Tour, right before we were doing exactly. all this stuff. Yeah, so, there was several, we, we were starting to meet with Warner, DreamWorks, there was a couple others as well, but yeah, we, DreamWorks was one of the ones that we were we were looking at pretty heavily, especially We've, with the signing of AFI right before Exactly. That. So, yeah, so Luke had signed AFI, and then um, Ron actually asked me to go check you guys out. I think we might have had Rejects on that Warp Tour. Mm. I think All American Rejects was on that Warp Tour, if I remember. Or it might have been Jimmy's. It might have been the Jimmy's that were on it. Um, um, yeah, we, we, had a, we had a band. Anyway, it was 2003. So, <laughs> I know, it was a long time ago. So um, so I go, I think it was the one at the Coliseum in that parking lot. Okay. So um, I'm like, all right, dude, I'll go, I'll, I'll go check them out. All good. You know, back when you're in the music business, you, you know, it's funny, now that I'm in sports, I listen to more music than I ever have. When I was oh, in wow. music, I was so that's much funny. more into sports. That's <laughs> funny because that's, I'm in music and I'm way more into right? sports. <laughs> so it's funny. So he's like, yeah, go check these guys out. I'm like, all right. Um, and you know, not blowing smoke. I mean, I was fucking blown away, like okay, blew my dome. And, um, and so I go back and I'm like, whatever you need me to do. And, um, it was right in that time when DreamWorks folded, you know, like mm -hmm. we pretty much sold the Geff and I think right when you guys were doing your deal. So I think it was right then, but I remember flipping Striker the record and a couple people at K-Rock um, the record. And, and I think, because when was Back Country? What year was that? It would have been 2005, yeah. I believe. So I was the music director right. at K-Rock when Back Country came out. Gotcha. So that was okay. the perfect segue. Um, it's, it's just, it's so funny, man, how this stuff comes back to me. I, you, you forget because, you know, you're adding a million records. Some of them work, some of them don't. So yeah, that's what it was. So was stoked to sign him at DreamWorks, that folded, and then was at K-Rock as the music director when we played Backcountry. Well, right on. Yeah, yeah, I guess I never really realized all that connection there. You know, at, the, at this time, just a backstory for everyone, it's 2003, 
I was 18. By, by the time this was out, I was 20 years old. The young guy in the band it was my like second record with them, so I didn't have all the ins and outs of, of who was where and everything like <laughs> yeah. that at the time. But uh, yeah, well, I appreciate it because yeah. that uh, it's one of the things that kind of kicked a fire under under the band and started really getting us going. It was uh, such a weird time, man, in in music because um, the '90s, you know, like when I was at DreamWorks, I was working bands like Power Man Five Thousand and mm. Papa Roach, and then at the same time, I was working bands to alternative radio, you know, like Elliott Smith and Jimmy World and the All American Rejects, right. and it was just this big pot of music gumbo and it was like no one could decide what was cool and what was not and so like Avenged Sevenfold was kind of this weird sort of debate that was being had like can we play this and I'm like well I mean, we're playing freaking Switchfoot you know mm-hmm. I mean like nothing against Switchfoot but it's like yeah. if, if like somehow we can play that like how is this not our sound but that was one of the records where it was like you know what I feel like if we go down this road there's there's a, it opens up a lot of doors or it turns off a lot of people like, well, how does this fit in? Yeah. And it was one of those like heavy, I remember there were like some intense conversations about whether or not to play it. And it's funny, I, I feel like the, uh, and just tell me if I'm talking too much, dude. No, I just, no, I'll no, get on this a roll. Is, that, let's go, um, I like it. I think the video was what put it over the top. It was okay. such a, and I can still remember, the video's one with the girls with the tongues and stuff, right? Yeah, it's yeah, a, it was, uh, the, the inspiration was Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It was like the Hunter S. Thompson, exactly. Mm-hmm. So the video totally put it over the top and everyone was like, okay, they're cool. Um, it was, yeah, <laughs> That's all we needed. <laughs> it's exactly, it's like, okay, it's not a bunch of guys with long, it's not a bunch of Heshers with 10 speeds with flipped up handlebars, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, wearing yeah. black jeans. This, these kids are... It's like they're local. I mean, what are we doing? This is a no-brainer. Um, so yeah, that's that's how the relationship with, with you guys got started. Yeah, that's interesting though, because I mean, for for me growing up, K Rock was a huge influence on everything, and to the point where now that I've been traveling and had been in a band even at this time, uh, when uh, K Rock was picking up Avenge, it was a huge thing for us still at that time. And then now I look back and it's like K Rock was influential uh for a lot of radio stations outside yeah but some of the bands didn't transfer over there like the bands that i thought were massive because i grew up here listening to them on k-rock um didn't necessarily translate over like a lot of the the punk bands and stuff like that that i was like oh my god these guys are huge i must be playing arenas (laughs) everywhere and then i learned later in life that they're like at the house of blues in front of like 900 people and stuff like that which is still great don't get me wrong but i'm saying like it was, a, it was that perception of K-Rock being the local thing and and in that kind of exposing me to a lot of different music because as you said, there was it, that was the cool thing to me about K-Rock back in the day is that you could have the punk rock, the, the ska, the sublime, and then you'd still have Rage Against the Machine or System of a Down coming out and and it was it really did run the gamut of a lot of different rock. Like today, my only gripe with rock radio is that everybody sounds exactly the same yeah. on it right now. Yeah, it's um, like I, I don't want to be the the old guy that's like it was so much better when I was there. But you know what? It was so much better when I was there, <laughs> and it was so much better than what I had twenty years before that. Mm-hmm. You know, when they were playing the Germs and Bad Religion and the Vandals, and then they were also playing freaking Tom Petty and Talking Heads. Like, wow. if you go like if you dig in to the annals of, of K Rock, you know, not to get super L A local on the the pot here, but like it's interesting to see how they were a, they, they were broadcast, they broadcast out of a house in Pasadena. Um, they were, they just played whatever the hell they wanted. Like, yeah. you know what, we're gonna play Tom Petty and we're gonna play uh, Black Flag and that's the way this is gonna go. And then, you know, they started making money like anything, right? You start making money and you've gotta hone things. Um, and so I got there at a time when, you know, we could, we were still taking chances. We were still playing things like Avenged Sevenfold, which was a chance, you know, when we started mm-hmm. playing it. Um, like you said, Rage, when Rage first came out, um, and still playing, like, when I was there, indie rock, you know, that was kind of one of my big things, um, is it was a sweet spot for indie rock. So it was, you know, the Franz Ferdinand, the Shins, and Modest mm-hmm. Mouse, and like, that became a big push at right. that time. And it was just, when we were able to play, like, if you could play a Weezer song into Avenged Sevenfold, I just thought that was the coolest thing. I'm like, dude, this is, this is what this station should be about. You know, it's kind of interesting as you're saying it too. I, di- I don't know the, the full history as, as deeply, obviously. And, yeah. and I, th- I say we go for it. I mean, people who aren't from LA 
fucking go figure it out, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and listen here and you'll learn a little bit about how it is. But it sounds more more like a, a college radio station the way, way it was done. But we're talking about the biggest broadcast yeah. for rock here in Southern California. Yeah, like $50 million a year in billing. Like right. it's a cash cow. It was one of the biggest stations. Back then, I don't remember if we were CBS yet or if we were still Infinity. I think we were CBS. But I think it was the top billing music station. So you're like, you know, you couldn't, mess with the formula too much it was mm. you know I, I would still get yeah you know i hate that you know for people that like still like fm radio and stuff i don't mean to kind of like really open the curtains and go wizard of oz on you but you know my job as music director was to place every single song that was going to get played every single day it's there's no such thing as an instant request or you know oh you called all right well guess what i'm gonna play this song for <laughs> so wait you a minute. Because- let's pull that curtain back a little <laughs> yeah. bit so how does that play out then so, so you just you get do you record so you've got those? all these rules so there okay. was a, it's a program called selector and um, you have categories, and so like power records are A's, and we would usually carry eight powers, and they would rotate every two and a half hours. Um, so you would end up playing them about you know eight nine times a day, uh, and then you would have. So basically, you would never play two new songs next to each other. You would never play two old old songs next to each other. You could play something that was called a recurrent or a power recurrent, which was like let's say, uh, let's say Bat Country was a year old, but it was still People still loved it a year later. Okay, I could play that next to like an old um, Nirvana song or something like that work because it's still fresh enough even though it's not new new. So you could never play, and this is like super taboo to say it on camera right now, but you know, it was a different (laughs) time. You could never play two female artists back to back. Wow. Um, You couldn't play two pop songs back to back. You always had to have, Hmm. like like we were playing Hey Ya by, um, by, um, Outcast. Outcast. Yeah. And like fantastic songs. Right? Song of the summer that year, man. That it was the bad. Like, and it was. I was stoked we played it, but yeah. I couldn't. I always had to play that next to a power, power recurrent, like mm. a Pearl Jam, Nirvana. Like it so had a to staple be for Red it. Hot okay. Chili Peppers. Yeah, yeah, it had yeah. to be a so like things yeah. like that. And so, you know, that's what the majority of my day was. It would take me three, four hours to put together one day. So of you music. say you couldn't like. Was it from in-house K Rock? Well, who? Yeah, the the, the uh, higher ups. The big boss, Kevin the, Weatherly, Kevin the man Weatherly. who uh, yep. who and he was, you know, Kevin came from pop. He came from top forty. He was running mm-hmm. Q one hundred six in San Diego before he got hired, and Q one hundred six is like the the Kiss FM of of, okay. uh, of San Diego. So he brought those top forty rules to alternative rock, and and that's you know when it just and like timing's everything, you know. I mean, he showed up. I think he showed up like six months before Nevermind was released. Wow. You know, and so, and it was such a weird time in LA where I believe, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I believe KLOS, which was the big rock station here, they didn't want to play Nirvana. They were like, this ain't us, man. This is not Pink Floyd and this is not. They were very classic rock. Yeah. And And so K-Rock's like, We'll, we'll take, take it, it. Wow. and they became the rock station yeah. because of that. That makes sense because I, I mean, they, they were they were alternative yes. rock, whatever that meant. I right. mean, <laughs> like, exactly. it was just like it was just all the rock. That that was also. I mean, I don't. When I say that it, everyone on the radio sounds the same, I think it's a two way street. It's the programming and the artists, right? The artists. Yeah. The artists are coming in and however they're being influenced by whoever are making songs and albums that sound like the other ones that are getting played <laughs> so they get played. Yeah. And the programmers are taking those that are working, they're just putting, it's basically like a human algorithm saying, oh, these ones work, so we're 100%. gonna keep doing that. And it's like, I understand that to a degree, but at least when you were doing it, there was a little bit of, let's mix it up a little We had some good variety. Yeah. yeah, although at the same time, like, you know, in the late 90s, um, they they could not get enough rap rock. You know, mm. they just couldn't get enough. It's like, yeah, give us P.O.D., give us Papa Roach, give us, right. uh, you know, Limp Biscuit, And, you know, and, and so they just, it worked so well. It was, so, you know, hip hop was so big and it's like, hey, this is a chance for us to to get into this. And um, and it was huge. I mean, you, you know, you remember like- Oh yeah. When you look back on it, when I listen to some of those songs, I'm like, holy crap, how is this the biggest stuff of the <laughs> year? Like, how is this song? Some of it was pretty bad. Yeah. To be but yeah, it but was. I mean, there was. The because it was that formula stand, that you're right? talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once there was, 
you know, there was the ones that stood out, like the like the biscuits or yeah. something like that, or or even Lincoln Park. One hundred percent. Lincoln Park kind of came after where we're a little bit more serious than a lot of the stuff at that yeah. time. But like that that rap rock, as it was described at the time. I mean, who describes it now? I don't know what the fuck they call it these days. It's just I fucking no rock idea. now. But yeah. it was the first time we'd heard stuff like yeah. that. And it, its popularity was so that, to your point, there was a few standouts. So then everybody who was a carbon copy got yeah. got a little bit of the action. Hundred percent. It was all derivative. It's you know, and you would and you had those breakout songs. You mentioned Lincoln Park, total breakout. You know, shut up when I'm talking. Like you know, it was Massive. monster. You had Kid Rock. Uh, you know, Bob with Bob the Bob was a freaking monster. Limp yeah. Biscuit. You know, Nookie, just outliers. And then and somehow Corn was was fit, fit in there. So Corn the was so Corn yeah. was a big one. Like yeah, Corn. Uh, also another local. Yeah, another local band. Um, Baco, right? I think Bakersfield. Yeah, well, some of them like there, and then also here in Huntington okay, Beach so as well. Some of them. Gotcha. I, I don't know if they grew up here, but they had houses. They lived all right in on. this Southern California area. So that was a big one. Like I remember playing um, Blind. Mm-hmm. And I think there was another song called Clown, if I remember right, on that first record. And mm-hmm. I remember that was a big one, like, what do we do with this? You right. know, what, and it's, you know, we, I was young back then. I'm an old man now, but I was young. And it's like, this shit's cool. And they're like, ah, and looking at these old people and they're like, mm, I don't know if that's cool. I'm like, this shit's <laughs> cool. And thankfully, you know. Matt was right. <laughs> cool. Well, I was wrong on plenty of, trust me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm only highlighting my, my yeah, good well, stuff. We're only going to talk about the good stuff, like yeah. Avenge, score. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that was a big one too. And like, yeah. it's so funny, you know, when they have these doubts and then all of a sudden it hits and you just feel it. And it's like, it, it's I, fun when it takes I off. I brought them up though, because I found it interesting. They, they, it felt like, and I didn't, again, as a, as an impressionable teenager, I was first finding corn from K-Rock and, and yeah. I think I saw them open for Metallica on the load tour right. locally. Um, and they were lumped in with that rap rock that was happening but, but they I didn't weren't. they were not a rap rock yeah. band they had they had some of the attitude of some of those other bands but when you listen to the music it wasn't and because I was involved in that I did not like that record until I grew up and realized oh, really? that it was awesome <laughs> yeah, that's so funny um, yeah they like we didn't we didn't it's, it's so like full disclosure like Personally, me, I'm I'm like an indie rock and a punk rock and a hardcore guy, you know, like that. I grew up in Chicago on bands like okay. Wax Tracks bands, Ministry and Front 242 oh, or Bolting Cox, and also like hardcore, Naked Ray Gun, stuff like that. Punk rock, Bad Religion, Descendants, Black Flag. So like f- for me, I had to learn kind of how to listen to records differently. Um, and my boss, who's actually at K-Rock again now, he just got back there, Kevin Weatherly, um, I'll never forget. It's one of those things that just sticks with you when someone says it. Um, as I'm bringing in, hey, here's Guided by Voices. What do you think? And he's like, Mm-mm. hey, here's Descendants. What do you think? Mm-mm. Yeah, there's, that's one that I think that is a travesty. To they should have been freaking huge. On K, on K- Rock. They should have been huge. Everybody who's a punk rock fan here in Southern California knows that Descendants was the, one of the biggest influences of the 100%. entire thing on the on the underground. Hundred percent. They have all the songs. I mean. All the songs that uh, that the other punk rock bands went on to use and play, Bill Stevenson was is producing all this stuff now. Yeah, like he's I know. He, and he's the the drummer of the band. You know, it's like it's fucking insane. It's what drove me crazy is like Descendants were different because they wrote hooks. Such like, oh my god, like ones. Hope and Coolidge and Clean Sheets and like it's one of my f- I, I'm the I'm one. Yeah. yeah, I mean oh, no, I don't want to grow up. Everything sucks. I don't want to grow like, up. Oh, all that, everything sucks. Like that, and that's what was so crazy to me um, that it. There's, man, I'll tell you, it's, it's funny and we'll make this transition to sports, but like, you know, there's, when I, when I look back and I'm so much, you know, more mature now and I was just an idiot, I'm still an idiot, but I was a real idiot back then. <laughs> we um, never completely yeah. grew up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But like, I look back and I'm like, how was this not, how was Struck a Nerve not the biggest song in America? Dude. Like it just, things like that hit you and you're like, I don't get it. And they still um, continue to put out good records. Yeah, I mean, I mean cool to be you. I guess is older now. I guess I was probably two thousand seven, two thousand eight, and then uh, what was the hyper? Um, they had one in like two thousand fifteen. Yeah. That was another great record. They're spreading them out a little yeah. bit more, and that, and they're still. I mean, they're still fucking amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's still bad. I mean, like. Like, look at Jim from Pennywise. That acoustic record is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's so good. Um, and But so Kevin said to me, he said, hey, listen, man, it's easy to be cool. I get it. 
you're cool, you listen to cool music, you want to expose people to cool music, it's so easy. He goes, you know what's hard? Hits. It's mm. hard to write hits. Find me hits. And so I had to change my calculus and be like, okay. And that's, you know, and it's funny, and I, I don't know if it happened for you guys as well, but when you start getting into that world and all this pressure is on you, and I didn't have to make the music, I just had to find the music, but it just it takes the romance out of music, you know? It takes the passion and the love, and it's like, all right, well, now I'm just listening for these 10-second hooks, and I've got to find them. Right. And that's when kind of everything flipped in music for me. Um, and I started, and, and listen, again, not blowing smoke, but like that's why when I saw you guys, it was such a revelation. It was like, yes. Oh, thank you, man. Rock, these guys kick ass. This is it's so different than shoegazers. Or oh, here's the rap rock, and now he's gonna do the dance, and then he's gonna jump on the monitor, <laughs> and here comes the big guitar. So, like it was, you know, everything, like you said, it was derivative, it was formulaic, and like just watching the show, I don't even know the word you use, but whatever it is, the, having just, you know, I mean, your bass lines, and just the double bass drums, and Shadow's presence. But like for me, what really got me was the guitars mm -hmm. in concert just it, it, it was, blew it wasn't my a lot dome. Of that, especially on, on Warp Tour, it wasn't a yeah. lot of that. That was, that was kind of, you know, I wouldn't say by design, it's the music that we wanted to write and, and, and everything, but being on Warp Tour was kind of like by design, Get, getting in with Kevin Lyman yeah. and all the, I mean, we grew up listening to all these bands. Now, the first Warp Tour I did was in 2003 with No Effects, Penny, uh, pretty sure Pennywise was on it, and Rancid. And, oh no, no, it wasn't Pennywise, it was Bad Religion and Rancid. Yeah, I mean, come on. Three of my all-time <laughs> favorite bands. I'm 18 years old on my first Warped yeah. Tour. I'm, I, right then I thought my career was at, at, at its pinnacle, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, you're hanging out with Lars and you're like, this is, <laughs> this incredible. is incredible. Like, this is incredible, <laughs> yeah. what's better than this? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing. It's, uh, and that's what was cool about Warp Tour as well, like why Lyman's such a genius was, you know, like you said, hey, these are the three bands I love but I'm going for the whole day because it's a party and now I'm gonna yeah. find all these other bands and I can, dude, I can remember, like I know exactly where you guys played, I remember exactly where I stood and I remember watching, cause there were like, there were some trees to the, as I'm watching the stage where you're playing, there's trees to the left and I remember backstage was behind you, there was like a gate to get backstage and I just remember watching this flow of people as you guys started playing from my right, they were just piling over. I don't know if there's another stage to the right or what it was, but I remember okay, watching right. them all crowd in as the set went on. And I don't know if you remember it, you know, that well. I mean, you played a million shows and it was, you know, just <laughs> one of those moments for me when I watched yeah. all these people start I'm piling in and I remember it as you're saying, like, where are the trees? What, 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 which one was this? It was, so it was- there's a few, there's like, there's like, there's Long Beach, Pomona. This was, no, this was the Coliseum I think you guys Coliseum. played. Um, I want to say, or mm. it was—it was a parking lot. I can't remember. So okay. yeah, see, I'm not remembering it perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's kind of like I'm, can, I'm piecing these things together. Um, but whatever it was, I still I can remember shadows with the mirrored glasses yeah. and just the look. And it's it's Big one man. of those looking good. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's just one of those enduring images that's been burned in my brain, and I'll I'll never forget. Man, that's cool. I I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Well, because. Here's the deal, like we, we just talked about, um, you know, once you, you were kind of asking the question, I guess, or kind of talking about once you see the hits and stuff yeah. like that, you chase them, I guess is kind of where it was going. And to, to us, we never had that happen. We never, because it was so organic how we were discovered. We, were, we weren't writing City of Evil or Backcountry to get played on the radio. Right. It was guys like you who thankfully had the, had the, uh, the foresight to say, let's get this on the radio, let's do that. And, and I appreciate that so much um, because for us, that, that set us up for our entire career to continue that mindset where we're able to just write the music that we love, that we want to create and, um, and be lucky enough to be one of those bands like a system or a rage or a corn at the time that we're writing their music and they just ended up on the radio. They weren't chasing anything to right. get there. Right. And I only know this one way, so I just feel very fortunate for that. You know what I mean? Because totally. I can't I can't I can't put myself in somebody else's shoes of trying to chase that and what that might be. Yeah. Uh, luckily for my career I've never had to feel that. And that's uh, again to, to kind of do the old man thing here and I think that's just kind of and it's not all music. I mean, look, there's great music. There's people out there writing incredible music right now that I love. There's new music that's coming out right now that I dig. But I think kind of
kind of what you were talking about is a lot of the hits, they're a lot of, they're producing it themselves. They're, you know, which is super cool, right? Like you can mm-hmm. make this great music in your garage or in your room or however you do it. Yeah, the technology it's, is awesome. It's right? incredible, but at the same yeah. time, I mean, you know, you know what the road does, you know what playing live does, how much that does for the quality of the music, how well you play, how you perform, f- getting that feedback from an audience to, okay, this was cool when this worked and like it was mm-hmm. a great feeling. Like they don't have that, you yeah. know, they, they might be able to write music in their room, but when you're not performing it, for, you know, I have a daughter who plays music and, you know, it's, and I try to stay out as best as I can and let her find things. But like my, my advice to her is always, it's all reps. It's just reps. Just go play. Don't worry about where you're playing. Don't worry about how many people are there. Don't worry about anything. Just play. Just play. And do what play, you love play. is the biggest thing. Exactly. Too. Right. Like if, if you love it, you're creating there's nothing bad that's going to happen from right. that. That's a great point. You know, there's yeah. no, you're not going to regret it. You're not. There's no reason for you not to go all in if it's something that you love. Right. I mean, you could always fall back on other shit. You know. Yeah, I think kids, you know, and I don't know if it's you know just the way I interpret it, but I, I just think the how hard social media is. I think kids deal with rejection differently now than we used to. You know, you'd get booed at a show, or maybe you'd read a bad review or something. But it just seems like now the criticism's so instant. You know, yeah. you put up a video and it's like, oh, here's six comments. Fuck you. You suck. This is shit. And it's just like, well, I, I will say to tough. all those people. <laughs> yeah, I, I read them every day on my feed. That's <laughs> well, what I try no, to tell them. But like, no, t- to be honest, it's not even a bad thing to those people saying it. Uh, to the kids out there looking at social media this way and, and worrying so much about, about what they're doing. One of the things I know that we did as a band early on and one of the things I know when I'm doing well on this here show is if I'm getting that kind of hate. Right. Because if, they're, if you're just getting all praise or nothing at all. Nothing's bad. <laughs> then it's not good. <laughs> Sorry. It's, just, it's not good. What you're yeah. doing isn't good. If you're, if you're creating real emotion out of people, that's when you actually know that yeah. you're succeeding. So take every one of those dislikes and fucking smile. That's right. It's good. Trust me. I'm, I'll look at the comments. Who's the fucking kook? <laughs> Who's this kook you brought on, Johnny? Who is this guy? Well, that'll be just on this one. <laughs> that's, what I mean. that's on this one. Because I'm sitting here. I'm the kook. I, I recognize that. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Thanks yes. for being here. And seriously, Absolutely. appreciate you for Absolutely. Uh, getting the, the jump start and everything. Mm. That's the, uh, we'll, we'll do a little shameless plug on that. That's the Drinks with Johnny IPA. It's delicious. How do, you, how do you think? I'm yeah. an IPA guy. It's very citrusy. It's, uh, it's got some bite. It's very hoppy. Yeah. It's good. I'm glad you said it's that you really were only going to have a couple because uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a whole picture. You got dust. a picture in front of you, right. and uh, it is a 7.6 percent IPA. Is it really? Yeah. See, that's where I got the water. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. It's a rotation thing. But when we were texting, you said you were going to bring over a beer so, here. So I don't know if you guys are familiar. I was worried when I was looking at it. I was like, God, I wonder if there was like ever any lawsuits with the logos or something. <laughs> we'll find out right here on the show. Have I you ever heard of looking. Three Floyds? Three Floyds, no. So Three Floyds. Uh, I've heard of this, actually. They're a Northwest Indiana beer out of Munster, Indiana. And, like, if there was ever, besides your IPA, um, if there was ever a beard that would be associated with Avenged Sevenfold, this would be it. Their biggest beer is called Zombie Dust. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Is is it coming back to you? Their second biggest beer is uh, Alpha King, and it's just got like this giant skeleton with a sword on it. But this is, check out their logo. Their logo is so reminiscent of Avenged Sevenfold. Uh, We're going to get our lawyers on this. No, please don't. (laughs) They're great guys. They're great dudes. No, I'm totally kidding. I mean, how many skulls with, death, with, with wings have you seen yeah, at this right. point? Ours is better than everybody else's, of course. There but, you go. You know. But it's great stuff. It's yeah. really cool beer. Awesome, and, man. And um, they If I was some. drinking right now, I would, I would, I would hit it up. There but you go. I got my non-alcoholic. Have you heard of the uh, Athletic Brewing Company? I have. Um, I have never tried it. I have a friend who's in the same situation. He's sober. He loves beer. And he just told me about it, like, it's funny, like a month ago, he just brought it up. They're fairly, I mean, I'm just learning about them. Obviously, I'm only, I'm taking some time off, so this is, I I wouldn't have seeked out uh, non-alcoholic before then, but it seems pretty new to me, and I just love the beer. I will continue, once I start drinking it, I'll, you could have, I'll I'll give you a couple. Once I start, uh, 
drinking again, I'm like still going like, well, when I want to take a night off, I'm probably still going to have right? a couple of those. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I just love, that's what I, you know, I got kids that are older, so they're just like, what's up with you and the beer? I'm like, I just like the way beer tastes. It's, like, yeah. I'm like, I'm not drinking to, to get sideways. Yeah. I just like beer. Not you know, every I, night. Not every night. Yeah, some nights I like to get sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not how every old, night. How old are your kids? Uh, I, I got older kids, so my oldest is 21. Uh, I got a fifth. I got an eighteen and a fifteen. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you met my my one and only son on the way in. Yeah, five, yeah. So, trying to get him to bed. You're like, come yeah. on, get to bed. Get there. You know how that is. Exactly. It wasn't that long ago. I'm sure you. Yeah, no, I can still like remember. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I can still remember to get to bed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and your your daughter is which one in the in the lineup there? So That's my the music. my musician is the fifteen year old. Okay. So she's at um, Huntington Beach. Uh, oh, high school. They have the APA and the MMT yeah, program. She's in APA. So awesome, she's in awesome. APA. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So she was at OSHA. Um, which is oh, uh, a performing arts school. So she well, was there yeah. for a while and then um, just wasn't digging the whole performing arts high school, wanted to go to a regular high school. So gotcha. now she's over at, the, at Huntington. That's awesome. Yeah. And the other two? The other two, uh, my oldest is about to graduate. She's going into her senior year uh, at Dartmouth in college, which is oh, back wow. on the East Coast. And then my middle is just about to start at Cal Poly Slow up in uh, San Luis Obispo. Oh, right yeah. on. So what are, what are their passions? Or what are they my oldest um, is going to get into finance. So she had an internship in Manhattan this year and ended up thankfully getting the return offer so she'll have a job waiting for her when she graduates um, out there. My middle is so into social media like she's just not just like into consuming it but she wants to make it so right. she's going for graphic communications and digital communications um, and packaging. She's like into packaging. That's so cool. um, so she's going up to slow for that and then my youngest is you know she's she's awesome. It's so fun man. They're all awesome but you know just the two, the two older ones, like people that have kids, I think will be able to relate to this. Like sports is so cool when they start playing and you get to go watch them play on the weekends and stuff. So my youngest, it's the same way, but it's gigs. Like I get to go to her gigs. So it's yeah. like a, a sporting event. She's performing and I'm there and I'm nervous and, you know, at times and you see her get rewarded for good things when she, you know, when people clap and stuff. So it's very similar to a sport, but it's different. You know, when she plays me, she writes um, when she plays me stuff she writes it's just like so cool and you know wow. those proud dad moments you know and it's i tell people it's so like sports as having been through it for two of the kids with with sports um to have music i just draw so many parallels between the two i think they're both art you know yeah. like i don't think people realize that that sports are art that you're you're trying to give your own interpretation to something, this set of rules that exist, but it's a loose set of mm -hmm. rules and it's up to you to interpret them the way you interpret them, the way you play um, the sport or you play the music. So I was able to kind of, I don't know, I've just always and sort of viewed are, it through that lens. And they're both under the lines of entertainment too. And exactly. Really boil it down. You want to make people feel good. So the entertainment one is actually one that, I, that I've thought about before, but I, I really love your analogy there of uh, in, going into sports because uh, showing that, it is, you can find your own path. Like 100%. that's how, and that's usually how the greats are. That's why they stand out. Because they found a different way to, to they're not car carbon copying. You 100%. know, they're finding their own way and their own, uh, you know, attributes to use to get them to the next level, yeah. right? And it's all practice. You know, I mean, there are so few naturally gifted musicians that don't have to practice and you just go slay it. They're out there. But there's a <laughs> one right next to me. <laughs> that's, but, uh, you know, that's the furthest exactly. from the truth. Yeah, exactly. I have to work my ass out. That's there's what I mean. Nothing comes easy to me. It's, <laughs> that's that's exactly. just real. It's practice. You got to bust your ass and practice. I just consider like my, you do. yeah. I consider myself a, a jack of many traits, master of none. I like to surf. <laughs> I like to golf, tennis, musician. Uh, podcaster now, right? I don't think I'm great at a single one of them. There's nothing. I, hey, <laughs> it has been my mantra forever. I am a mile wide and an inch deep. <laughs> that is, that the ladies my love it. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about girth. <laughs> they call me tuna can. <laughs> That's fantastic. Right there. there we go. Yeah, a couple of guys having drinks, and it always ends up back to dick jokes. That's mm -hmm. how. That's how it goes. No matter how old you are. No, right? Exactly. So, let's get into it. Yeah. Let's get into some sports. Exactly. So, you said you you, uh, you grew up in uh, Chicago. Yeah. Did you grow up a Bears, Cubs fan? I did, yeah. Bears, Cubs, um, Bulls, Blackhawks, all of that. Um, and it's interesting because I have so many friends that, you know, I came out here for college when I was 17, uh, and I've stayed since. So, I've been here 30 years. Um, so, it's 
it's funny how many of my friends that stayed out here, because look, when you, no matter where you come from, when you come to Southern California, you're like, I'm not leaving this place. You're kidding me? That's why there's so many transplants, because there's yeah. nothing better. Yeah. Um, and they're all still beholden to their childhood teams. It's, you know, and for me, I just kind of had this, uh, this epiphany when I had kids and I was still into the, the Cubs and I was still into the Bears, you know, and my oldest Peyton was a little girl and she's got the little Cubs cheerleader outfit. And Named her Peyton? Yeah, I, yeah, well, it's funny. So my wife was like, what do you think of the name Peyton? And I was like, hmm, oh, I think that's a great name. <laughs> and that's, uh, I think that'll work. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I did not name her after Walter Payton. My wife came up with it and I was uh, just like, okay. But in the back of your um, mind, it was Walter 100%. Payton. 100%. <laughs> you know? And then when she spelled it P-E-Y instead of P-A, I was like, um, eh, I'll yeah. just deal with it. It's all right. Yeah. I got Peyton. Um, yeah. But then, I don't know, I just kind of had this, this realization. I was like, why would I, why would I want my kids to be Bears fans and Bulls fans when we live in, Cal- we live in Los Angeles? Like, right. they're, they're going to go to a Cubs game once every other year, a Bears game once every five years. I could take them to 50 Dodger games. 20, and I was working for the Lakers mm-hmm. at the time. So after I, so I got out of music and I got into sports. So that's what happened, basically, as I left. Let's tell that story real so, quick. So, yeah. So after, the, you got out of, after you got out of music, what So I'm the music director at K-Rock. Chick Hearn passed away. Mm-hmm. Passes away. He was the longtime voice Late, of the great. Lakers. Arguably, the he, not arguably, he's the greatest basketball play-by-play right. man ever. So when he passes away, they kind of go through this weird transition of a couple years, not knowing who they want the play-by-play guy to be and all that sort of stuff while still trying to honor Chick. And I get a call from the radio station that has the Lakers, and they're like, hey. Oh, and by the way, the entire time I'm in music, I'm doing sports for Kevin and Bean. Uh, right. Because Jimmy Kimmel was their sports guy. He left, and the guy they replaced him with. And he just, went on to do something. I've never, never, never heard of him. I don't know what happened to him. I was drunk in a gutter, living under a freeway. <laughs> um, so when Jimmy left, they were just like, hey, can you just do like a sports report on your way to work one day, just so we have some sports kind of thing? Like, yeah, sure. So I would stop by, do sports. they pay me 50 bucks, and I'd go to DreamWorks or go to London or whatever. Um, well, then that turned into full-time sports when I went there to be the music director. So I was a full-time member of Kevin and Bean for like two and a half years. And so during that time, the Lakers used to listen, and they knew who I was. And so they called and said, you want to be part of the Lakers broadcast? And, you know, here's Fork in the Road. And I was like, you know what? I'm kind of feeling like Napster and all this stuff is happening. I don't know where music's going. Maybe I'll just kind of get out. So he bailed early on us. So I bailed her, but I, I set, <laughs> I poured the foundation. The yeah, house was okay, not yeah, framed. Yeah, right, right. You left it, you left, you're like, I'm leaving the, it in good exactly. hands. Exactly, the house was not framed yet. They were able to do everything. I did so little. I did, I did almost nothing. Um, so I, you know what I did is I called the, uh, the trunk to drop the stone off. That's it. The truck dumped the stone. Everybody else built that house. Um, so I, uh, so yes, yeah, so I was like, how do I turn down? It's funny, I called, not to name drop, but like, I didn't know what to do. And I called Jimmy. And I was like, hey, mm-hmm. dude, what would you do? And he's like, who is it? I said, the Lakers. I said, I'm going to ask you again, who is it? I said, the Lakers. He's like, all right, dude, come on. It's the yeah, freaking it's Lakers. Lakers yeah. So I took that job. Up gold, baby. Um, yeah, so I took the Lakers gig. Um, and so right at that time, maybe a little bit even before that, no, it's probably right at that time, um, when I was like, what am I doing? Like, uh, my Peyton was probably three at the time. And, um, and I was like... Uh, they need to be Laker fans. But now, see, I had Laker season tickets when I graduated college, too. That was one of my stipulations to get hired in the record business. I had a couple labels, and I was like, hey, I want Laker tickets. And right. uh, so I got season tickets as part of my signing bonus. Whoa. Um, in 19- That's a hell of a thing to ask for. It, you know what? It was the perfect moment of time because I got the job the year before Kobe and Shaq showed up. So you could pick uh, up the phone and call, and they were like, yeah, where do you want to sit? In the forum. So I ended up getting seats right on the tunnel. Section Jeez. 21, um, right where the Lakers and, and te- both teams used to go into that tunnel yeah. together. So they were great. So you could heckle the opposing team and high five the Lakers. And then Kobe and Shaq came the next year. They were sold out forever after wow. that. So yeah. I got lucky. So I, I was actually a Laker fan. But then I was like, why am I a Cubs fan? I should, they, we've got the Dodgers here. And we've got, and so that's like, I, I have this conversation with my friends all the time who are Steelers fans or Patriots fans. I'm like, dude, stop dressing your kid up. That's, that's your connection with your dad and your mom or your grandfather. That's mm-hmm. for you. Like, your kids need to be fans of the teams where they live. They live where the Dodgers are, where the Lakers are, where the Chargers and Rams are. They live... You had me at two of those See? Teams. Like, that... See, and this, it's, <laughs> this right. See, so this works for us. This works for me. Like, like I get it. You're a Raider guy, yeah. but your son can get in the car no, and you can't. can get season I tickets. I know you're going. I'm not allowed And this. he can be... And, and so I get to see it now with my own too it's it's funny because it just happened last year um 
like I am now seeing so many, like I'm not embellishing so many people for, cause look, it's LA. We had no team for 25 years. So we've yeah. got fans of every team here and they're not going to give up their allegiances. It's their team. So when the Browns come, I will see mom and dad in Browns jerseys <clears throat> in Browns jerseys and junior is in Justin Herbert jersey. Yeah. Mom and dad in Raider jersey. Junior is in a Herbert jersey. Like that's what's so, f- and I, it just, you need that superstar and Justin yeah. Herbert's that superstar that's got all these kids so far. going, I want to be Justin Herbert. Um, I so far, certainly don't want to be Derek Carr, a guy that Whoa. throws the ball into the dirt on fourth down. Who does that? All right, we're gonna go right <laughs> into it now, aren't we? I mean, who does that? <laughs> um, uh, so that's, that's my pitch to you, is your son can go be it Rams or Chargers, he can I'd be go. O- I'd be okay with, with Rams. Yeah, you would not be okay with the not Chargers. Not okay But with I think it's Chargers. up to him. You know, I think he watches Justin Herbert at 6'6", six you know, six, 240 pounds, slinging it all over the oh place. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> he's he's going to get excited. He's going to be like, look at that guy. You know, my, my best friend from, from fifth grade is a diehard Chargers fan. We go to the game every year together. So you're going week one. San Diego. I'm going week one. I'm working on the tickets right now. Um, and if only you knew someone that yeah, had if some. only I knew somebody <laughs> right in who who wasn't such a big Justin Herbert fan, he wasn't just talking shit on bills, my Derek man. Carr. Right? He pays the bills. <laughs> Justin pays. I'm my pretty bills. sure Derek Carr pays you guys bills too. Every time I go to a Raiders game, there it's, yeah, it's about seventy five percent. That is absolutely fan. true. He pays the bills too. We love Derek. Derek pays the bills. Uh, yeah, the Raider games are funny, man. It's you know, and I tell people this. I was like. And I, and, and I called, I used to call games nationally. Um, mm-hmm. So I would go to a different city every week to call a football game, you know, go to Green Bay for the Packers Vikings game, go to Tampa for the Tampa Falcons game, whatever. Um, and I did a Chargers Raiders game in San Diego and it was nasty. Like mm-hmm. it was not a good vibe. It was. Um, it could get pretty brutal, especially down in San Diego it was a little It worse. got brutal, man. And I was like, dude, this ain't cool. Um, and so when the Chargers came up here and when they moved to L.A., they hired me as their play-by-play voice. So I've been with them since they've been in L.A. First time I went to Oakland, I was like, oh, boy, this is going to be pretty gnarly. And I'm walking around with my Chargers polo because I'm working and kind of thing. And dude, the people were so cool. Like, yeah. they were rad. They were, you know, I'm having conversations with them on the field. I was like... There's a little bit of a rap because of that San Diego stadium that was happening for so yeah, many years. Dude, that, that was, was a different. Nasty. That was well. You had. Um, I have a friend who's a cop down in Oceanside, and the Chargers logo for years down there was was used as a gang sign as well. So they were. A lot they of that they would, they, they, There was a lot of that element, and there yeah. was, and then of course Raiders with their stigma as well. Yeah. Raiders fans. There's a lot of that element in the parking lot that you would see. Exactly. As you're describing. Because I would tell people I did a lot of 49er games, and. People would not believe me when I would tell them. I said, listen, I will take Raider fans uh, every, every day and twice on Sunday over Niner fans. I'm like, Niner fans are nasty, man. Mm. Those, that's a, that is a wildly underrated, nasty fan base, man. Really? They, get, they get after it. I've been to one game over at Levi it. since they since they've yeah. been there. It's a little bit different at Levi's. Mm-hmm. It's much better at Candlestick, dude. Mm-hmm. It was nasty. Yeah. Like I would see some serious shit in the parking lot. I think everyone's just got to be mad though. Candlestick historically, I, I never got to go there, but oh, it was a dump. I, heard, I heard it was a pretty bad complete place. dump. Complete like Oakland. Oakland. We, was had, the we worst. had the worst stadiums in the league. We yeah. had San Diego. Qualcomm was a dump. Yep. Oakland is a sewer. Right. And. Four and candlestick was a dump. That was the one thing that when 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 you talk about those dumpy places, like when, like when the Raiders inevitably went to Vegas. Yeah. Um, thank God. Uh, it's, a they, it's a great stadium. It's so I've cool. I've been actually been yet. I've been oh, on the it's outside. awesome! It's really if cool. If only I knew someone would get me in there. Too. <laughs> get you uh, in there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, so, like you know, a lot of the Oakland fans out there, are like, oh, I I didn't hear it too much, honestly. But a couple of times, you'd hear someone say, "Oh, now they're not my team anymore," right. and I'm like. Dude, come on. They they couldn't stay there. You cannot ask a professional team to yeah. play on a goddamn baseball diamond for that many yeah. years in the worst stadium ever. Below sea level. So yeah. the entire, like this is the thing that blew me away the first time I went there and walked on the field. When you would get to one of the corners, it would get like mushy. And I'm mm. like, what is up with it? And they're like, oh yeah, dude, it's below sea level. So... The, the water just you can't get the water out of this spot they pump we, the hell out of it but it still won't get out one i was able to go in the locker room area and stuff like that we had a show next door at the convention center years ago and one of my friends from high school over here at marina high school derek barton was playing for the a's 
It was the first basement for the days before Giambi came back. Right. And he got us into like, he was, they were out doing, you know, baseball stuff. And he was like, oh, if you guys want to use the gym. I went to that gym and I was like, this is it's the worse worst than a hotel gym. gym I've yeah. ever, I was like, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> this is bad. And I'm like, this is, these are two professional yeah. teams in here. It was brutal, dude. The first time I saw the gym, uh, there was like food on the ground. And I'm uh, like, dude, it looks well, like no a bicycle from 1960. None of those guys work out there. No, they can't. No. They can't. So yeah, and look, I think that's the same thing with the Chargers. It's like, mm -hmm. dude, if you were ever at Qualcomm, that place was a dump. And yeah. they weren't getting, and I guess, you know, like this is such an unpopular thing. And this is where I'm going to get all the negative comments. But it's like, because nobody ever wants to side no, with you got billionaire plenty, owners. You know, I know, yeah, exactly. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, trust me. Raider Nation <laughs> is not like me, which is fine. Um, but... Like when you're, a f and they're like, why are, why are there public funds for these football stadiums? These owners are billionaires. And I'm like, all right, well, let me put it to you this way. A football team plays 10 home games a year. They play eight, you know, when it was 16, they would play eight and two, eight regular season, two preseason. That is 10 dates out of 365, 10 days will be occupied by your football team. Mm -hmm. The other 355 is something else. If I don't want to be a promoter and I don't want to be a landlord for this giant stadium and deal with the upkeep, why the hell do I have to build it? Like, why yeah. do I have to build this thing that the city's going to want to use for its college team, for concerts, for, I don't, I'm not in that business. I don't want to own yeah. the stadium. I don't want to spend $2 billion to build it. I just want to play in it. Like right. that's what my position, like when I heard about Kroenke, $6 billion to build SoFi, dude, I'd much rather be the Chargers paying a dollar in rent and doing yeah. revenue splits. It's like, to me, that's, I'll play my 10 games here and you can, you can get Taylor Swift in here for seven <laughs> days and deal with that rider because I want nothing to do with it. <laughs> I mean, I'd go for that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah, I guess you have a point. I mean, I just wonder, like, if, yeah, I see both sides of it, to be honest, because if I had that much money and I was a uh, owner of a team and I was bringing it in, of course, yeah, I'm going to go to the city and be like, hey, you need to kick down some too. Right. We'll build it together. But maybe if I can own that whole damn thing, then I could be making more money the rest 100%. of the time of the year. And as a businessman, which, you know, you don't become a billionaire owner not being a smart businessman, right. why wouldn't you also then push it out and make it that kind and of thing? And I vibe? think that, but the, I guess the, I should have clarified, I'm speaking to like Mark Davis, who doesn't right. have that money. No, he doesn't. And so he's like, I don't, I don't want to build it. I don't no. want to be the owner. I don't want to be the promoter. You guys can do that. You can make all that money. I don't want to spend the $2 billion. Right, I just So I get it. So yeah. Vegas is like, okay, cool. We'll build it. We'll be the promoter. You can play there. Come to us. And it's like, cool. Yeah. Now we're good. And I think, it, I think it was a good spot for the league for, I mean, for everybody, really. I mean, Raiders are what, the second or third, maybe even some, some years, the first out-of-team market as far as fan base That's and huge. stuff. That's huge. And they're the only one of those that had a shit place that they were playing at yeah. at the time. So it made perfect sense. Hundred percent. Who who can move who can move cities, and still put asses in them seats? Yeah. The Raiders. And I think for Vegas, you know, I, I think particularly because look, it's I've been to the like I was blown away how many Charger fans were there in Week 18, mm. and I was talking to people there, and they were like, "Yeah, dude, you've seen the Bears game." They're like, "The Bears game was like 70, 30 Bears fans here." Yeah. And so I think. What It'll it does minute, is, though. A, it, you're always going to have asses in the seats because think about it. Every well, single team that's visiting Who's is like, not going to want to go to exactly. fucking Vegas and watch their favorite team play? 100%. <laughs> They're going like, to travel go like, I'm going to get messed up all weekend. <laughs> right. I'm going to go straight into Sunday or Monday night and I'm going to continue and watch my team. 100%. <laughs> and I think the great thing for the Raiders is they're kind of a... You know, they're, uh, like we were talking about, they're entertainment. They're a draw. Yeah. You know, the Raiders, are, they've got the live band in one of the end zones. It's like, it's a draw. And the best fucking logo in all of sports, by the way. That's a, you know what? That's interesting. How? Who, who do you compare it to? Who, who, who? There's a couple other that I think, a couple others that I think a, are great. But I'm just saying, like, No, that's a that great. Look, here's, that my, here's my issue with the Raider logo. And you got the helmet over there. You got the helmet over there. So I don't there. know if you want to go yeah. grab it and, and give a visual here. Yeah, I'll, I'll like, here's. On it. Or do you want to you want to grab that? Do you want this? Or this? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. So here's my question: What do we notice about the Raider logo? He's got a patch, and his eyes closed. Yeah. 
So why is his eyes? He can't see anything. When the Raiders' eyes closed, why is is he sleeping? Oh, he's not. Is that eyes not all the it's way closed. closed? That's not all the way. That closed. is a closed. That's look not that, all the way closed. Is that a closed eye? He's Sam? also looking. He's looking angry. No, that's a closed eye. He's winking at you. <laughs> it's but it's <laughs> he like looks embarrassed. why does why does the eye not, not open? Shouldn't the eye? I don't know if it would just look weird. And when they drew it up, they were like, yeah, we had it open and it looked weird having an eyeball, so we're just gonna close it. But it's like his eyes closed. It's very strange, isn't it? I'm yeah. not. I'm not saying it's not a great logo. It's just that's something great. that's always been odd. It's fantastic. Everything about it. Yeah. This, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Switch it to that. It's a. It's a great logo. I'm trying to think of what are some of the other. Because it's like it's different to say the interlocking. The interlocking LA is one of the great logos. But mm -hmm. it's just you know what I mean. Like you're talking about maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind the of art, logo, yeah, yeah, not art the, logo, not just not like the NY not, not for LA. New York, yeah, yeah, not no, no, LA. that doesn't count. That doesn't count. Yeah, so that's because I mean, that's I'm, more city. Like that becomes right. that's exactly. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's hard to beat. It's as cool as a, now. Look, that's what I'm saying. I'll say, eh, Chargers lightning bolt's pretty sweet. You got to no, admit, no, 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 you no, got to no. listen. I'm as giving soon you as the, you go, as soon as you go to Qualcomm and everyone's singing the Super Charger song, which is the cheesiest fucking song I'd ever heard. I'll say this though, I will take. And it's just not because I, I got a check with a lightning bolt in the top corner. I will take the supercharger song over the annoying grading. Even if I were a fan, I can't take it. Raiders. <laughs> and that's how they sound. I don't know why they do that with the ers. They all go, Raiders. And they scream at the top of their lungs throughout the like entire it. game. It's and perfect. it drives you crazy. It is, it is exactly the most why. annoying chant. Why it works. <laughs> it's the most annoying chant. But we're talking about chants. We're also, like, I'm let's go Yankees. First. That's pretty great. You know, yeah. that's pretty great. Beat yeah. LA when the Lakers go on the road up in Portland. Pretty great. It's it's funny, but it's it's, it's always Raiders. Yeah. Yeah, it's, no, it's good. You'll you'll come around to the dark side. Oh, I most definitely will not. I most definitely will not. And I'm very <laughs> close friends actually with the radio broadcast. Uh, Papa was a really good friend of mine. Still is. He does the mm. the 49ers now. But love Papa. I've known Lincoln forever. He's the the radio analyst. Uh, Brent Musburger and I got along great when he was doing the radio. Um, and their producer. You invited him on the fucking show. Exactly. <laughs> you know what? He'll come on. Brent, Brent's such a cool guy, man. He's like some of those dudes that have been around for so long. It's one of the great things. Look, I'm super, again, I say it all the time. I'm, not, I'm an idiot and I'm, I don't know how I lucked into this life, but uh, I got one of 32 jobs. There's 32 people that get to right. call NFL games, you know, on the radio for a team. And it's so fun to meet these people that have been doing it. Like Papa, who did it for, like, I used to love talking to Papa when he was the Raiders guy. And I still see him for the 49ers. But, like, it was so, it's just great to hear stories, yeah. you know, Raider stories. And Brent telling stories about the Rose Bowl. And you are looking live. Just to have that history and hear it. Um, you know, just how all do you How do you do that, though, with the Chargers, though? Because now you're in SoFi. There's not a lot of great history. How are you? Uh, how are you doing yeah, with that? there's. Well, I, it's it's it, you know it's funny. You're being a smart ass, but <laughs> <laughs> but I'll say this: like that's what's kind of cool about it is yeah. I get to write it. You get to do the you know yeah, yeah. like a lot of like the the Herbert the Herbert story, the Joey Bosa, the Derwin James, like these guys that I think will have a legit shot at being in the Hall of Fame. Like their entire story is going to be told right. on. For, for calls by me, you know, and it's kind of cool. Like when I see the NFL Network does these uh, top 100 players, and so it's fun when they do those, uh, they don't use the TV calls because they want the, you know, the team call. They want the, they want the juice, you know, for the team when Derwin James is making an interception. So it's fun to kind of watch, and it's like, yeah, when this guy gets into the Hall of Fame, yeah. like, I'm going to have this little kind of weird part because they're going to play a sizzle reel and it's going to be me calling Derwin that's, intercepting yeah, and really it's cool. really cool. That's when people are like, wouldn't you rather be like, you know, Joe Buck? And I was like, well, fuck yeah, I would. the guy makes 20 million bucks a year. But, <laughs> but this is still cool too. Since that's not reality, <laughs> it's kind of cool to be the voice of a team. You yeah, know? I can imagine. And it's like I, Vin Scully, you know, I mean, yeah. just on a grander scale for all of us here in LA to be able to listen to Vin when we're driving around. Right. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's a really and cool game. And he ended game. up calling other things, you know, obviously the right. Dodgers, but then went on to call so Yeah, he called the, the catch. Speaking of yeah. football, you know, yeah. he called the uh, the catch in the back of the end zone for the 49ers. 49ers called a bunch of Masters. Yeah, Masters, um, yeah. Yeah, super cool. Um, it is, it's a rad gig. It's, it's really fun and it's, 
Um, and it's cool because, you know, I kind of have this sort of way to, with football, and I never had it with basketball when I was working with the Lakers, but football, for some reason, there's just, there's a connection with music. There's always bands, mm -hmm. because, and I don't know if it's because it's one day a week, and so you can just find so. this, this window to get in there, yeah, but the, yeah. The bigger halftime, there's a longer exactly. halftime kind of thing. There's, because you did have the, uh, the Lakers, I mean, Showtime was, was what it. brought everything into the yeah. NBA that was kind of already happening in the NFL with cheerleaders and entertainment at the right. halftime and all that stuff made perfect sense. And now you look at it, it's like, how did the NBA ever not have this? Well, before uh, the late great Dr. Bus, they didn't have that anywhere in the NBA. Nowhere. So um, it was. It's a. Uh, it's really interesting you bring that up with the ties in music. I also think like. In football, there's a little bit more downtime too. You know, there's right. in between. There's you're setting up. There's a lot of stuff. So there's music in between, just playing over the house. At I think there's time. just so much. You know, it's the only sport where there's that huge pre-party, right? The oh, tailgate. The tailgate. Is the best so thing, you right. have bands. You know, right. like yeah, last year we had the Offspring yeah. out before the the opener. Oh uh, yeah. You know, so it's like it's, and I and I don't think that's rare. You know, like I think there's a lot of places that they're like, yeah, hey, let's get a band to play before. You know, because people are here. They're here five hours, six I think hours before did the kick. Raiders uh, tailgate exactly. back in when they were in Oakland years ago, back in the eighties. Yeah, they did a few times. Yeah, Metallica it felt like they were always playing Raider gigs. Yeah. It's kind of cool to have, you know, that tie-in. You know, to be in that sport um, that has, you know, the Super Bowl halftime show obviously is a oh. huge deal. Last year's one was pretty. It was so good. So good. It was so good. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it was. It was so good. Um, no matter what kind of music you're into, if you, it was just such a great production, the yeah. sound. And, and I had someone tell me like when, when Dre came in and uh, the engineers for SoFi, the sound engineers, you know, kind of show up and they're like, he's like, okay, well, I want this, this, and this. And they're like, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's, you know, we can't do that. That's, that's not gonna happen. Just not with what we have. We can't configure it that way. He's like, okay. Uh, and he's like, I heard he's like, okay, can we get these guys out of here? We're bringing some And he brought people in and he got it to sound exact. Like, they were, like people that I talked to were like, dude, you have no idea how wow. good he made it sound from where it was when they were like, yeah, we don't think that's going to work. And he was like, don't worry about it. I'll get it. I can figure this out. And they were like, the sound was so incredible. It would blow your mind for, because you've played well, stadiums. It is, yeah. It's so hard to get good sound in a stadium. Right. I mean, especially, I mean, you probably have a better chance at SoFi. I mean, I could imagine because of the canopy or the canopy, yeah. yeah. Just well, everything just bouncing off in general, right? And it's a newer system. It's right. a brand new stadium. There's, I mean, I do feel like the older stadiums are damn near impossible because they weren't built for anything right. like that. But like, so what happens? Know, the sound just escapes, or yeah, I mean, if it's open, absolutely, yeah. it's just you gone. got that. And the concrete, everything being just straight concrete, right. is terrible That's bad. For, for acoustics. Yeah, for got it. Terrible for acoustics. So. But, um, yeah, I never liked stadium shows. Yeah. I've always been that snob. Amphitheaters that are okay. To, I like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, sheds are great. Amphitheaters yeah. are great. But I love clubs, man. I just like... Same, man. I want it's, a good arena. Forum. Yeah, Forum's, they Forum's they sound is incredible. It is now, yeah. They, um, they did a great job. But yeah, like LA... 10 years ago now they redid it. It seems know, like it was just yesterday. I know, right? It's so, And of all things for it to become that like... And people that know music, you, you know, because they're like the, the sound of the Forum's. It's like, yeah, it's, that's, that's why it, everyone man. still goes to the forum. It's like, instead of Staples. Yeah, instead of Staples. I mean, you still go through Staples. I saw some bands. I saw Tool there right before the pandemic. Uh, it was an incredible show. Yeah. Tool sounds amazing. I've seen them so many times. They always sound great. Saw them um, at the Mayan a couple times. Yeah. That's the best venue, man. Yeah. Oh, they sounded so good there. Fuck. I haven't seen them there. So it's funny, I'll tell you, when, when the Lakers played the Celtics in the finals, when they lost in 2008. Eight. Uh, we were staying. The first year we had Gasol, he came halfway through the season. Right. Celtics fans don't get too excited about <laughs> yeah. that. You had we had Gasol for half a season and still took it. Still made the finals. Win. Still made the finals. It was that damn game four. Yeah. Um, but so we were staying at the Copley Plaza, and I think that's where we we're staying. So uh, I'm doing post game. So everyone from the stations there because we were the Lakers station. So the show before us is there and uh, Petros. Who does I do the radio show with him in the afternoons out here? He's there already in the bar drinking, and um, and I'm doing the post game, and so I show up I don't know an hour and a half later, and uh, I walk into the bar and they're like, hey, this is our friend Danny. <laughs> and I'm like, it's fucking Danny from Tool. Oh, he wow. was just hanging out, came out to see me. They're like, yeah, yeah, it's Danny from Tool. Danny K, yeah. I was like, uh, 
<laughs> it's too good. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so he's a big, big Laker fan and was uh, yeah. was flew out for the for the games. Which is, you know, it's cool. You get you to see a lot of cool games and being a, like Lakers. And I mean, you're so far, you were talking yep. about being there for the Super Bowl. Um, yeah. It's what, are a, some of, what are some of your favorite, like, experiences uh, calling, calling games in um, general? Yeah, I've had a few. I've, you know, so I've, done a, I've, I've been able to do some college football, which is really cool. It's is it? really cool. I have, the pro- I, just, I have a problem with college ball. Really? I know that they can get paid now outside of oh, everything I like you, that, yeah. but I just, as, as a guy who didn't graduate high school and started my career at an early right. age, I, I just find it kind of shitty. Yeah, I think, so I guess here's what I would, you know, I, I, I'd push back to that with this. The majority of the kids on the team are not going to go pro. A hundred percent, I understand. And that. they're getting a free education and they get, you know, and so my daughter, my oldest daughter played college lacrosse. So she went through this as well. They get priority housing, priority classes, private tutors. They get free meals. They, like in having gone to college from a family that didn't have a lot of money mm-hmm. with a ton of student loans and scholarships and just trying. And I had two jobs trying to make ends meet. I just know the challenge that that was of just right. finding a meal. So like, the way that they get to experience college is so different than your standard college Sounds student. Right. They're not eating ramen. They're not eating PB and J. I think not, you need to eat ramen. Is, right, which is, what we, right? which is what we did. I didn't go to college, but I was in yeah. a van and there I ate go. the same exactly. goddamn shit. Exactly, it makes it, it makes you stronger. Um, so there, and it's one of the things that's that's preached to them when they show up. Listen, we're taking advantage of you. Yeah, take advantage of us. Okay, get your degree. Go to the department head that you want, the field you want to go into, because you're going to walk out of here as a let's just say USC as a USC football player, and there's going to be guys crawling on their uh, bare chested on their tongues trying to hire you because they want a USC football player in their firm. So if you get your degree and you work hard, you're going to be set for life because you played college football. So that's that's the benefit of it. Now, do do I agree with? Nick Saban gets to make twelve million dollars a year, and Alabama is probably pulling in a hundred million dollars a year. They should be, and it, this isn't NIL um, to get into this discussion, you know, which is name, image, likeness. These kids get to make money now, now yeah. on their own from you know drinks with Johnny wants to spo- sponsor UCLA right. receiver. You can, you can cut him a check, and he's doing YouTube videos. Only ones are going to uh, end up as a Raider. There, there you go. I don't think you can guarantee that. <laughs> but, uh, but, well, then they're not getting my money. <laughs> but, uh, but I think I'm with you. I think yeah, the yeah. school should have to. Hey, you know what? Because my, it is. That's the problem. I understand what you were just talking yeah. about. But it. Does, but when you see the amount of money exactly. some, some of the schools are making, it's very lopsided. So to me, the best. Like and this is my radio partner Petros. He he came up. This is something that he's been preaching for a long time. But I wholeheartedly agree. What you should do is it is an investment account that let's say you play four years. You're a four year starter. You get let's just say it's twenty five grand a year, and that is put in this account. You don't get to touch it, but when you graduate or when you leave, it's yours and mm-hmm. it's it's matured. It's earned some money. And thank you. Here's and you know, and when you graduate, you don't have any student loans to pay off. And now I've got 100 G's to start my life with. But before I even have a salary, I don't have to worry about getting a job straight out of college. I can. I got no issues with rent. I can buy a car. I can get myself set and not have any debt overhead. To me, that's not hard to do. I don't you know, think for that these we, colleges. Yeah, I don't think for most of those colleges. The yeah. colleges that we're talking about, of course, right? B ones. Right, and, and that's like that. that's the problem. Is it's not equitable. You know, right. it's not the Sun Belt is not the Pac-12 is not no. the SEC. So that's where it gets tricky is, you know, you ki- so for those kids, you know, I think it's so important for them to take advantage of the scholarship, to take advantage of the tutors, to take advantage of the connections right. and all the businesses that want to give you an internship just so, you know, because the guy's a, a jock sniffer that owns the company and just wants to talk to you about playing football. <laughs> there's your in, you know, take yeah. advantage of it. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I think too many of the kids don't. Like right. they, they, they just... You know, and, and look, 
again, I experienced it firsthand with my daughter. I know how much she had to practice when she had to get up. You know, she had to practice. Okay, well, Dad, it's it's burning me out. I got lift at 7 a.m. Then I've got class at 9. Then I've got to figure out a way yeah. to shower. And then I've got practice from 3 to 5. And then i got to do my homework. i got no time to be a college student. Like, I get it, man. It's it's asking a lot. It's and, a and different especially, experience. And to that point, though, that is something that, you know, we can talk about is they're giving all of that time to the sport maybe knowing full well it, it ends after this college right. career but this is what i'm going to give to set yeah. up for later i get that that's good but i'm going to devote this much time into this thing it's not helping me develop the skills that i'm going to need beyond here right i think um i think fo- football's interesting football's very interesting because you can get really fucking hurt you out can there, dude. a get hurt badly yeah it's a violent sport you get hurt in uh, pretty much any sport yeah, as well but, but not like football yeah but Th- there are things like football is all about sacrifice and teamwork. It's 11 pieces that have to move in concert in order for a play to be successful. You know, if you're on defense, your goal is to prevent forward progress. If you're on offense, your goal is to make forward progress. Right. You, it's not basketball. You can't go one on five. It's not baseball, batter versus pitcher, mm. one on one. It is all 11 people that have to have a task focused on that task, know your assignment, it execute started, your assignment. Was, maybe you would know more of the, since you know a lot more about sports, the, wasn't it supposed to simulate war yes. at some point? Like yes. That was the whole basis yeah, it was of the, it? Yeah, it, it was all Ivy League. And it was, yes, That's most what it was. of the guys was, yeah, were yeah. former military commanders that right. drew it up like they would. A, uh, a battlefield. Um, and that's why they call it the gridiron and you know all right, those right, war right, right. terms, the, the trenches. Here's the trenches. I heard and, that somewhere, but I didn't actually do yeah. my own research on it. It is kind of it's kind of gross now when you just now that we kind of know the and look, when this was created, the horrors of war are not what they are now. You know, back then there was still a bit of a romance about war. You know, it was sabers and single load you know, mm. pellets that would fire at you. Now look, a cannonball could blow a freaking hole straight through you and that wasn't cool, but yeah. it wasn't, you know, the wrecking machine that World War I kind of ushered in, not to get into this whole side of things, but anyway. Um, but yeah, so football, like really, I, I do believe of all the sports, it's the one that can teach you things that is incredibly applicable mm-hmm. to real life, you know, just. Did you play? I did not. No, I did not. I played baseball um, and not at a very high level. Um, I was, <laughs> I don't know. I, nowadays, I'm like you. I surf, and that's that's my joy. That's what I do. We should um, get out there together. You're just in Seal Beach, right? I am, yeah. yeah. So I'll surf anywhere from, I, I surf bolts all the time. Oh, okay. I'll come down to 20th. I, I don't really do the pier a lot. Um, yeah, do I. Yeah, so the farthest I'll come down usually is like 17th, um, but mostly... Mostly Bolsa Cheek. I was in the river. This I'll surf every day. So I was in the river this morning. Um, right on. But yeah, so like for me, um, snowboarding, surfing, skating, loved all that. Um, but played baseball all the way through my senior year in high school. And then was like, I'm not good enough. I'm such a slap dick. You know, well, who am I kidding? This ain't going to happen. <laughs> you know, could I go to, I got one, one inquiry. I got one letter from the New Mexico Military Institute about baseball. And I was like, what the hell could they want from me for, as a baseball player? And I was like, oh, they probably just want me in the military. Yeah. <laughs> this is like their way. Hey, would you like to play baseball here? Yes, I would. Okay, great. You owe us seven years in the military. Wait a minute. I didn't. That's I didn't. not what this I is was an trying to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as far as being an athlete, no. Yeah. No, nah, not my thing. I end up talking about it, which is upsets people. Like, what the hell do you know? And I'm like, well, it's like it, anything. It you watch it enough, anything. you figure it out. Right. And, you know, it's, it's also... The entertainment side of it, like right. yeah, you don't. I, I I've never prescribed to that. I mean, I played a little bit of little bit of football. You know, I played a couple years in high school. I played pee wee and stuff like that. Fortunately, uh, for a kid who was good at, as a lineman at twelve years old and go. didn't grow much past that, uh, <laughs> yeah, football grew up. Yeah, I peaked in middle school. Yeah, 12, I was like, but hey, man, yeah, I was, was kicking fun. ass was at twelve. Fun. It was great. I, I was for a little bigger while. than everybody. Yeah, exactly. And then they kept going, and I stopped. Yep, yep, yep. So it's funny though. You mentioned that though. The whole so I've had this I, every now and then. I'll have this just little interaction with guys, and they're always, you know, and it's fun. Like I never take it personally. I don't care. I don't take anything personally. Um, they're like, ah, oh, fuck you. What do you know? You never played. And I'm like, remember when you guys were arguing about, about that rap record and like how much you like it and what, what a piece of shit it is? Like, what the hell do you know about music? You ever make music? You ever work in music? What's that supposed to mean? I, said, I don't want to hear you tell me what you think about music because what the hell do you know? Right. 
well, look, that's different. I'm like, no, it's no, not different. No, it's, it's not different same. at all. That's, that's You've never made music. You've never been around that's music. Don't tell me if this is a good or a bad song. I don't want to hear it. And which, so, which I, which I, it's the same thing. So I disagree with that yeah, as well. Yeah, exact I, same thing. I think in music you should be able to. Hundred percent. It's an opinion. It's what exactly. I'm there for. As an artist, I put it out there for you to decide if you like it or not and tell me if it's good or bad. I don't give a fuck. I'm yeah. doing what I want to do. Exactly. And that's same with sports. Same with sports. Same, it's the exact same thing. Nobody knows what the hell they're talking about anything. So whatever, let them have No opinions. one knows anything in life, by the way. They really way. don't. Everyone really goes through their whole yeah. life. Well, something now, now we got 140 right. characters to tell us what to think about everything, right? You know, it's kind of nice. It is. Repurpose tweets. That's, <laughs> that's how we show off our intelligence these days. Yeah. All right, well, let's get back into right. this. Yeah. Coming up, football season. Yes. We got your team, uh huh, the Chargers. My oh. team, the Las Vegas Raiders. Yes. In week one. Week one, September 11th. We got the toughest division on paper, AFC West. Ever since I've been involved with football, I've never seen anything like it. I've never like seen it. Like never seen anything Last like year, it. the NFC West looked like it, looked like it was going to be a pretty, going yeah. into the season. Yep. It didn't turn out the same the way. Seahawks fell apart. Seahawks fell apart. I mean, even right off the bat, though, the Cardinals came out. 10-0. 10-0. Yeah. Rams won the Super Rams. Bowl. 49ers were in the championship game. Yeah. It's like that was Huge. A very... And it, now on paper, we're looking at the AFC West very similarly, maybe even a little stronger. Yeah. What are your expectations? I think it's more like, I think this is better for me to ask you. <laughs> because I think this is, this is where we're really going to find out how much of a fan you are and uh-huh. how, how grounded in reality you are here. I think this, See, this, is, is, this is much better. This is the thing. Yes. So I don't know if this is true for all fan bases. I can only speak for myself. And the, the other Raiders fans that I grew up with, my family, my friends, everybody... Right. I'm very grounded in, in, in reality of... It's been a rough go for 20 years. Well, yeah, it really has. There's been a... I would like to blame a few of things, but it, it, things happen. I'm sure. Not, I'm not like that. I'm not going to say would have happened. Would have, could things happen differently? Sure, but that's life. Right. Anything could... could and football tip guys get hurt. It's, yeah, ex- it's it football. Happens. It happens. So... You're asking me my expectations. I'm asking you. You said it's the toughest division, the AFC West. So when you look at it, let me say, let me say, when first, you look at this division, division, where do the Raiders? Where do you put the Raiders in those four teams? The Chargers, the Broncos, the Chiefs, and the Raiders. You have the Raiders. Honestly, where? honestly, honestly, before the season starts, I say I have them second best, only to the Chiefs. Okay. And only I might put them above the Chiefs on paper. But you can't count out the team that has just won six straight AFC That's West ch- champs. He's delusional. How is that delusional? Explain to me how that's delusional. So here's, here's my issue with the Raiders. And look, this is what I would say. And I've, said, I've gone on record with this. If I, if I were betting, you know, if I were to bet, I'd put 50 bucks on the Raiders to win the division because they're plus 700. Why would I not do that? You know, they're better than they were last year. And yes. they won 10 games last year. Here's my biggest gripe with the Raiders. They have the worst offensive line in the division. And it's not close. It's far and away the worst offensive line. And they have the worst secondary in the division. And it's not close. It's far and away the worst secondary. That's my big issue. It's mm-hmm. like you've got Justin Herbert, Pat Again, Mahomes, Russell Wilson. Who's delusional and, now? And you have a bad secondary. And then you've got Bosa and Khalil Mack. Randy Gregory. Oh, see, this is now we're talking. Okay. So you have How dominant you pass about, rushers. I, I loved Khalil Mack as a Raider. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of speculation about what happened when he went over to the Bears, and maybe he wasn't all in in that, on in a that losing, team. In a losing atmosphere, yeah. In a losing atmosphere. And he was still the defensive player of the year. One of those years. Yeah. This is, this, we're a few years removed from sure. that. And we are also talking about a position on defensive line yeah. that doesn't have a lot of longevity. you got to have twitch. I, I, you're seeing him every day in Costa yeah. Mesa. How, how, how is it looking? So... I know you're not going to come no, here. No, no, I will. I, I'll tell you. Like, yeah, what yeah. I see is, I see, he wrecked practice. What day was it? I think it was, uh, I think it was Wednesday. So it was before the, so it was Tuesday. So a week ago, he wrecked practice. He mm-hmm. can do that still. Like, he just, you couldn't, it was just unblockable that day. What, for whatever reason, that day, the one thing I know, he's still the best run edge defender in the league. You cannot run his way. He is so good at stacking and shedding. He's still got that. I don't know if he's the same guy rushing the passer that he was. He's mm-hmm. not. I don't think he is. 
but they so desperately needed that, the run. They weren't, that last the, year, that was a big problem. Disaster. So I think to have that, and Joey Bosa is the best all-around defensive end. He's so good at run stopping as well. So basically, they would just run away from him every game. And they would get five yards. Teams would get five yards of carry. Well, now to have Khalil, now it's not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to run. So now if you can't run, you're facing more. Because that's like the thing, you know, like you've got to keep teams out of third and short. Like you have to get third and longs. And that's how defense is, mm-hmm. that's how defenses are able to execute in the league. So I think he's going to help them on that front. I don't, I don't think he's still, a, you know, I don't think he's ever going to be that 15 sack guy again. Right. I just don't think that's what he is anymore. But for what the Chargers need, I think he's going to be okay. Um, so, like, that's my issue with the Raiders and okay. why I'd be so worried. So, where do you, so so where I think do you see the Chargers I think they're, at? Like, I'm not crazy about the Broncos. So many people are high on the Broncos, and I'm just like, man, they lost the best defensive coach in the league. Mm-hmm. So just to assume that their defense is going to be fine, it's not. It's going right. to drop off. Love their, It's the best secondary in the league, mm-hmm. but their front's not anywhere near as good as some of the other teams, you know. And and it's not you, as good as Chandler as Jones high. and Max Crosby. It's not yeah. like they don't have that up front, but they have a great secondary. Um, you know, it's a first-year head coach in Nate Hackett. I don't know what he is. You know, mm-hmm. their offense was great because Mike Munchak was the coach, the best offensive line coach in the league. Right. So now he's gone. Um, so I'm, I, I think, look, like I said, I would put 50, you know, I'd put 100 bucks on the Raiders to win the division to win 700. I think it's worth it. I don't think it's likely just because I think O-line and, and secondary are too important, and it just isn't a good match. In the divi- I think it's a tough division for them I, I to agree. be in. Um, right, that but look, I didn't think they would win. I didn't think they'd win ten games last year, and they did. With, and that, that, and with, all, that, with all that uh, controversy that happened, uh, exactly. Off the field. Still exactly. able to do what they did. Yeah, I think so. Here, there's a couple things to remember. Like your favorite team, you know, you, you have to look at how were the games won, mm-hmm. and you want to be careful of too many one-score games, things that right. broke their way in the last minute, and they had a hand, they had quite a few of those last year. Right. So that's something to be usually that normalizes itself. Um, so that's something to be careful about too. But you also didn't have a true head coach. Yeah. Yeah, and I like, look, the, the, the Patriots' offense is, and it's a, it's a really good match, and you're not going to like when I say this, but it's, it's meant as a compliment, believe it or not. Like, look, Derek Carr does not like to get hit. He doesn't. And nobody likes to get hit, but he really doesn't like getting hit. He just, his clock starts moving fast when he gets hit early. Uh, I've seen it a million times. McDaniels doesn't want you to hold the ball. You know, John Gruden wants you to hold the ball. He, he mm-hmm. wants his... You know, spider two Y banana it's crap, you know, and, and that just didn't mesh with Carl. Like he was not comfortable standing in the pocket, pushing the ball downfield. Now he was a lot better last year. Last year was his best year and it's not even close. And that was but without Gruden. It was after, yeah, it was yeah, but games. I think he I think he started getting comfortable. Right. I think he understood, like, hey dude, if you're gonna make it in this league, you're gonna have to take some shots. You know, you're gonna get hit and it's gonna hurt, and that's just life as a quarterback. And well, I, I mean, thought he was great. In, in all last fairness, year. Let's, let's talk about the fact that he had a. It was in the MVP conversation the year that he got hurt. Hundred percent. He comes back from that. To and your that's point, I mean. no you one gotta, likes getting hurt. No, but then you gotta you gotta shake it off. Like yeah. you have to. And I think it was really hard for I him think to he do did, that. And I think he did that last year. He did. So, but with McDaniel's, he, it doesn't matter. Yeah, right. He's gonna get rid of the ball. He's so that goes back to what else just was your was your battle problem? line. So that's where I'm saying they hmm. could be successful. Is that's why I said I would put the money down because look, yeah. if he can make it work, and they've got these great receivers, you know, you make a case it's the best big, you know, best maybe it's three the receivers. Bad, in the maybe league. on paper the O line looks. I, I've heard it's this terrible. about that. Okay, but what about the running game? Because it looks doesn't good matter for. for if you're opening that up though, and you get rid of the ball fast it's, enough. Yeah, I don't. I mean, that's what it's going to have to be. It's going to mm-hmm. have to be short, quick quick hits um but you know you can't do that because you can put a lid on it and like that so that's like one of the big things that Brandon Staley did with the who's the head coach of the Chargers with the Rams two years ago when they were the best defense and it's what Vic Fangio who was the head coach in Denver and this is super sportsy now we are sports and it's so hard now I'm so um, nervous. but um so like what what Vic Fangio and that's a system that a lot of people are using now he's kind of the guy behind it is you have two safeties high and you never allow a team an explosive play. And the idea behind that is the more plays they run, the more opportunities you have for a mistake to be made, for a fumble, for a tip ball, the line of scrimmage, for a strip sack. And so 
you can't live like that. Like you cannot, and that's what happened to the Chiefs, remember, early in the season last year, is everybody parked two yeah. safeties high. Remember the Chargers forced four turnovers in that game they won in Kansas City in week three, and like everybody just started doing the same thing, and it but was a mess. And then the finally Chiefs they were adjusted. like, all right, we just gotta, we gotta stand tall and take our shots. They made their adjustments, and that's so, the Raiders are gonna have to the do AFC that. Championship. Yeah, the Raiders are gonna have to do that, and the Chiefs, the difference was, they had a young offensive line with right. two rookies and a new left tackle and a new right guard. They had, they had the only thing they had there from the year before was a uh, left guard. <laughs> Everything else was new. Mm -hmm. So after that O line came together and coalesced, that's when they took. But again, off. I mean, we we both watched enough football too to say like an O line is quote unquote terrible or whatever, worse than the league. Also knowing football, you know that they can figure it out yeah, and yeah, come together to. as a team. Like yeah. they might, because a lot of times, a lot of people might say like individually O-line players, but you got to remember they're, a, they're like their own team in yeah, there. Yeah, it's, it's they, a glove. They, it's it's yeah, five fingers 100%. on a glove. Yeah. And there's a lot of ways to And four to of those figure fingers those. are shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to, you've just got this thumb <laughs> that's there trying to stop. We'll see. Look, try to pick up that beer with a thumb. Now, see, I can I'd find a fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fun, though. It's going to yeah. be... It's, it's no, so, I mean, okay. So, also today, the, the news we're filming on whatever fucking day it is. Uh, I just saw that, uh, was it uh, the corner? Mm -hmm. uh, Jackson. Ankle surgery, yeah. Ankle surgery. So, he's out for two Maybe the Raider weeks. game. Yeah, hoping it's two and not four. If it's four, it's bye-bye Raiders and Chiefs. That's the mm -hmm. problem. The Chargers have a tough start or a great start. They can win those first two games and, you know, talk about setting a tone. We just beat the Raiders and Chiefs in five days. If you split them, okay. If you lose both, oof. You know, so that's, that, that's football. And that brings me to games. the question. So I have one of these wonderful Drinks with Johnny Raider Oh, you did not. Shirts. Is that what you asked me for what my size was? Yes, for I that did. Stupid I got shirt? one over there for you. And uh, the question is, I, I was, I was going to say, let's, let's, let's wager on the September 11th game. Okay. We don't have to go full season. Sure. Just the first game in SoFi. Okay. Uh, I was going to propose something. We'll, we'll negotiate. Okay. This is how bets go. Okay. Now, remember, I am employed by the Chargers. <laughs> I am not a fan. Like I'm an employee. <laughs> this is not like you. Yeah, hey, I'm a big Charger fan. Well, that's why. That's why it's That's why it's technically not a Raiders yes. shirt. It but is it, a drinks with Johnny shirt. Yes. Where do I have to wear it? <laughs> Where can you wear it? Um, yeah, look, I can. Can you wear it uh, during uh, one of the radio shows? Yes, I could wear it during a Petros and Money radio show. Okay. Absolutely, I can okay. do that. Okay. So next day. So next day, next day I would Tuesday, have to wear that. You would have to wear this. Okay. Now, what do I get out of this? That's what I got to figure out. This is a negotiation. This is how bets happen. Mm. I could wear a Charger shirt here on Drinks with Johnny. Boy, oh boy. What? I, yeah, let's do that. That works. Okay. I'll get you a Charger shirt. You have to wear it on a Drinks with Johnny episode. Perfect. Okay. Easy. Can it, can it be an a Eli Manning one? I see what you did there. <laughs> I see what you, you know what? Oh, I Drew would, Brees. Would Drew Brees. Would, there you go. Drew, actually, I just saw Drew. He was just out. Uh, he's still, it's so funny how that, how shit works out. You know, I think, or, I still think Phillip is a much better quarterback than Eli Manning. If Phillip mm -hmm. would have gone to New York, I think they would have won more Super Bowls. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I thought, I think Phillip Rivers, I was watching him as closely as I did over the years. Phenomenal quarterback, obviously a Hall of Famer. The one thing, though, like I would say to my, to my buddy, who's a huge Chargers fan, every time we go to a game, even when the Raiders were dog shit, and it didn't matter. I still root for the Raiders, especially when they go against the Chargers. I'm like, about to spoil your season here. That's the only thing I could hold on to. Because yep. then I'd watch Phillip Rivers light it up for three quarters, and in the fourth quarter, I'm like, just wait. Just wait. He's going to throw two picks, and they're going to cost the game. I saw it quite a bit. <laughs> called quite a few of those and it's that's the that's the good and the bad it's the ultimate competitor yeah. and that's you know sometimes it's the curse it's where the gun, you just the gunslinger like, too you got to go for it, which i respect yeah I mean, same I, here i love huge it. brett Fa far as a kid yeah, yeah. pat mahomes like pat mahomes, it's just it's yeah. fun to watch i'm not guys a pat mahomes like fan let's, let's <laughs> but it's fun to watch it him. is fun to fucking yeah. watch i have to admit that yeah. Yeah. and who's not fun to watch Derek carr he's boring oh god Give when okay. Here's the thing. This is another thing. Everyone gets so down on Derek Carr. I don't. I don't fully get it. It's a little bit of Raider hate, but it's okay. Um, look, the guy last year 
lit up the Philadelphia's defense for the second most accurate passing game was, ever like, recorded. Here's the thing. Ever I mean, recorded. Here's all I'm saying. Only to Drew Brees. There's something about him, and I don't know what it is. That's that. See, that's the thing. That's when you it's you don't like, have anything else. And here's no, the no, other thing about no, I'm him. Saying, like, where's he's where has he had a true wideout? Number one, the last time he had it was maybe that Cooper year when he went on to be in the top contention for MVP that year. Since then, well, I it's mean, Darren Waller. Waller's inc- he's, he's yes, so but he's a good. and he, I, like, you he's, could argue, he, he is he's, so good. He's a special tight Renfro end kind of thing. So Renfro good. slot. I'm saying, I, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. This now we got Devonte Adams to do mm-hmm. that. I would love, by the way, for you to look look up a stat, um, and maybe Devonte can break it. Hmm. But I want you to look up wide receivers over the age of 29, hmm. and I want you to find one that's had a great season. You were talking about Khalil Mack, mm-hmm. and is he too old now? And is he still the same? I didn't say that. You put words in my mouth. I didn't say, is he too old? I you just said, he's you not said, the same guy. I don't, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very... It's a question mark. It's Everyone's very... Everyone's really weird. excited yeah. about Khalil no, no, Mack no, no, being listen, back in the division. Devontae's, I think Devontae's the best receiver in the league, best yeah. all-around receiver in the league. But he's 29. And look it up. It's weird. Wasn't there a it's guy a, that, like, there was a lot of people saying that no, one, no one's ever been that great past, what was the age of 40? Something like that. There was a guy, I don't know what his name was. So you're telling me that Devontae is the one, I mean, look, there's, <laughs> and obviously hey, there's these, Jerry these, Rice. These, these things are made to be broken. Uh, that's, that's what it's going to have to happen. It's really weird. It really is. Like 29, for some reason, it's the cliff. And it's the cliff for wide receivers. And they just, pew, it's crazy how by the book well, it Rice, is. Jerry Rice is the exception. Jerry and I think Randy, 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 Moss? Randy Moss had one good year, I think. But was that, that in the Patri- Was that with the Patriots? No, he was younger. He was like twenty. I think he was like twenty-seven, twenty-eight with the Patriots. Mm. But yeah, it's weird. Twenty-nine's the year, and um, and Devontae got that. So huge you're saying Devontae has a cliff coming? I mean, if history is our guide, it's like Max Kellerman talking about Tom Brady over here. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, look, he could be the anomaly, but that's what he would have to be. He would have to be the anomaly because well, if, it's, there's, if there's someone to do it. Might as well in, be a guy that just showed Vegas. up on your team. You That's didn't care about it until right. this year. <laughs> hey, whoa, 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 whoa. To say that I don't care about other teams is bullshit. I just don't care about other teams in my division. Okay. No, my, my grandfather's actually a really big uh, Packer Packers, guy. Packers okay. fan. So I, and as I was talking earlier, I grew up uh, loving Brett Favre. Our guitar player, my best friend, is a Steelers fan. Other best friend. I know I just talked about my one from fifth grade. Right. I'm allowed to have more best friends. Sure. Before. Um, and, uh, so those are two other teams. My father's also a Steelers fan. Um, so those are two other teams. So what's teams your story? How did you get to be a Raider fan? Dude, when I was growing up. They weren't I'll even here. Exactly. They were gone. So no, that's, so when I was first growing up, there were, there were still the uh, LA Raiders. Okay. When I was first paying attention to football, I was about okay. eight or nine years old. Okay. Um, and they were showing if you're like the highlights from the, the, I forget what they called them on ESPN but it was like the Great Iron Classics or whatever it was and they I would stay home from school and watch those because right. like the middle of the day ESPN there was just no real sports at the time going on so they played these highlights of teams from the 80s going crazy and stuff and it was the Oakland Raiders and then I'd start uh, I'd watch those games like the highlights looked amazing of course make right. everyone look great the highlights but then I started hearing the stories about how they accomplished it behind the scenes, partying, mixing it right. up and stuff. They sounded like the rock and roll band of the NFL, like going in yeah. the 80s, going out, getting all fucking coked up and then coming in and winning the Super Bowl the next, the next right. morning and like shit. Like the 90s like Cowboys. <laughs> Same thing. Hey, I'm not, I'm not Wh- knocking that either. Whatever works. <laughs> yeah. Whatever works. So, what, I, so were I, you I, ever a Steelers fan though, like because of your dad? No, like, no. Uh, my, my dad was a Steelers fan, but he's not the biggest sports guy. Okay, I, gotcha. I won't, I'll be honest. Like, he's a Steelers fan right? because I don't even fucking really know. <laughs> uh, my, my, my grandfather grew up in uh, uh, up north. He was actually in Michigan, but ended up being a... Uh, uh, a Steelers guy. Uh, no, he ended up being Packers. Oh, the Packers guy. So, Woof. Neither one of them, though, when I'm growing See, up, I, neither one of them, I, so, I was growing up with, with too many influences. My brothers more, more so influenced me than my uh, parents did on my sports choices. Right. I became a Lakers fan, diehard Lakers fan. Um, Dodgers. Baseball. Uh, Dodgers Angels, because I'm not that big into baseball. I'm on gotcha. it. I, I'm, I, I like the sport when I go there. Kings. Nice. The Kings. Love the Kings. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, Dodgers, 
Angels back to that. My grandfather was a Dodgers fan, and my grandmother was an Angels fan. So oh. I grew up, and I would grow Take up with that. So I was like, until they meet in the World Series one day, I, I'm, right. I'm fair to walk like So both follow teams. me on this. Grandfather Packers. Um, yeah, my father's side, yeah. Father Steelers. Right. You Raiders. Yeah. We don't have anything that goes generation to generation. So your son, Chargers. <laughs> no. See how this works? No. Like, he can't be a Raider fan because you guys have to each have your he own team. He so he be. needs... He and needs ain't his gonna own be thing. Chargers, I'll tell you that. He needs his own thing. No, I don't want him to be. See, this is Why the other not? thing. It'll You're a Lakers fun. fan. You lived here long enough. I know. You don't want the. I don't want my son to like the redheaded stepchild of the league. The, cl- the Clippers. Rushed him to bed so he wouldn't talk to <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want him to be. I don't want to. No, no, but, no. But you know, but wouldn't you it know be that. better the if you cli- were the, like the Chargers but I'm are to LA as the Clippers are to LA? Not really. Not really. Are you saying they're worse? No, I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying. Listen. If, if you, I'm trying to think of the best way to make this parallel, like the, the LA Raider fans crack me up. It's like, they left you. They oh, left no. you for a mistress. The mistress was Oakland. They let, you're like, no, we love they're, you. We want you to stay. They're like, Oakland. They like, came yeah. here. We, right, were, right. The mit- we okay. were the mistress. And then they went back to their wife. Yeah. And then when it was time to leave the wife again. They went to Vegas, baby. I'm good with that. I mean, it's like, <laughs> oh, the mistress and the wife have fun in Vegas. Three and a half hours away. So? The Chargers are 30 minutes. And uh, to your point, there's a In the there's most home, glorious stadium a, in, I will say in that, football. That fucking stadium is glorious. That it is. That screen. Your son is going to be a Herbert fan. No. He is going to no, be a Justin Herbert fan. No. Listen, he's not going to root for a freaking quarterback that wears mascara. And Whoa. throws the ball away on fourth Whoa. down. First of all, the mascara thing has been <laughs> completely debunked. It's not his fault he has glorious, beautiful eyes, all right? That's Why? some bullshit. Why? What is with the bullshit accent? He's from Bakersfield. He Whatever, lived in man. Houston for three years. And he says, y'all. And he talks with a Texas drawl. Like, dude, he's weird. That's nothing he's wrong with that. He's a weird guy. To be fair, you were right, man. I did too. Yeah, Which I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. I got no problem. I'm just saying that <laughs> your boy is going to see Herbert and he's going to no. be like, look at that guy. See, I get, I, I understand. I watched Herbert the last couple of years, especially when he came in out of nowhere, seemingly when homeboy got the lung yeah. punctured. Week two against like, the Chiefs. I was like, should have won that game. I was like, okay, this guy's real. Don't get me wrong. Herbert's real. But like we're saying for other things, I'm going to pump the brakes for just a second. I'm, I'm not ready to ready to re- roll out the red carpet it's been for two Herbert. Pretty yet. good years, the, the best first two years of a quarterback ever. Whoa, they are. I'm saying they're the best first two years for a quarterback ever. I don't know. Patrick Mahomes in the same division had first two pretty good. Fucking Problem years. with Patrick Mahomes was he got a year to sit. Remember, wow. he sat. So his second it was really his second and third year. So you would have to yeah, take Herbert's okay. second and third year and put those together to see how those measure up to Mahomes, and they'll probably pass what Mahomes did in his so second and third year. He threw for 5,000 yards last year and 35 touchdowns. Well, okay, okay. We're talking about the stats. You're just talking about the numbers that way. I'm talking about also yeah. it, you got to factor in where the team goes to. But the defense, AFC championship sure. and then Super Bowl. So, like, my whole thing with that so is— So Herbert's got to do that. Right, but opinion. my problem with that is the guy lost five games that they led in the fourth quarter. Like, he can't help with it. His defense was dead last on third downs and dead last against the run. That's the Raiders, not on him. I don't know why you have so much hate for the Raiders. We tried to let you guys in the playoffs last year. I know. That was, even though it was a loss, it's the greatest, it's one of the, if not the greatest game I've ever seen. It was an amazing game. It I was, was up here watching, actually. I didn't get to go. It wasn't, I wasn't in Vegas. Um, I was up here with my friend. We were screaming. It would have been I was so fucking cool if it ended in a tie. It should have. It would have been hilarious. But had it ended I a really tie. couldn't believe how many times, speaking of uh, defense that just seemingly couldn't stop anything, yeah. those five fourth, fourth downs, downs. I was like, oh, you, I'm just. Just stop one of 19. them. Stop one of them, and the game is fucking over. Yeah, I couldn't even couldn't. believe it. It was so cool. It was such a fun game. Um, it's gonna be interesting though, because I, I, I hear you with on paper the the line in the in the secondary. I think it's better than a lot of people are giving it credit because I think it could be coached up. And here and I think this is the first year after last year, like it's moving in the right direction. It was moving in the right direction before Gruden was was kicked out of the league. It was going in the right direction. Things yeah. were happening. And they just this is the to... first time Carr, well, now second time he's had a real head coach for any, With we'll a, see how an long he lasts, coach, yeah. an offensive head coach for any they, long uh... time. Del Rio I loved, by the way, that season, those yeah. couple seasons. I, I just loved how 
He was an he ass prof- kicker. Yeah, he prof- he personified right. the Raiders to me. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's yeah. gonna. Be, I will say. I, I tell people all the time. Can't wait to it's, get a free promotion of drinks with Johnny on your show. It's gonna be fantastic. Listen, I remember. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. What was it? What was it at SoFi last year? Was it twenty-one nothing? They led at the or, half. Yeah, I think it was twenty-one nothing. Yeah. Ended up winning twenty-eight fourteen. Um, it just was never really that close. Mm. And you then, didn't like that comeback at all? You didn't, you didn't think it was that, yeah. Well, the comeback was really just, a, it was a corner that fell down that right. allowed the, the long touchdown play. And weird shit like that happens. It in does, the NFL. which like, is why I wasn't that nervous. Like a I'm team like, okay. not making it to the playoffs when another team gives it yeah. to them. Well, I don't know if you gave, it's funny though. <laughs> so you go back and watch that film. Um, and so the Raiders kick a field goal in overtime. Chargers get the ball, they drive inside the 10 and uh, the play that if you go back and watch the play the play that Herbert throws to Mike Williams that would have been a touchdown mm-hmm. but Mike couldn't haul it in it's so weird it's one of the weirdest plays because Herbert starts his progressions left and I can't remember who the, it might have been Guyton was the first receiver Eckler is in the slot the running back so he takes the snap looks left no no and streaking across the middle with no one in sight. Keenan Allen would have caught the ball and mm. walked three yards into the end zone. He goes from here to here and skips the progression. It's so weird how things... Weird and that's, is that... But that um, goes to your point where things just happen. Yeah. Like, it's, like it's just one of those things. Like this is a guy that's so good and passed for 5,000 yards and is an all or is a pro bowler. And on You're that one play... Mistakes, right? On that one play, for some reason, he just is like, oh, I know where Mike is. Let's go get Mike and get the one-on-one. Which I have met Mike Williams. He's a really He's nice awesome. guy. Yeah. Really nice guy. No, so it's just funny. That's, and that's football. You know, it's like, yeah, how come he didn't make that play? It's like, well, because there's two freaking giants bearing down there's on him. And you've got to make that decision in two and a half seconds. Perfect hindsight. You're talking about re-watching it, too. Yeah, it's like, exactly. You know, I didn't, you know, unfortunately, I didn't re-watch that game because the, the following week I was watching the Raiders in the postseason. Yeah. So, uh, whatever. How did that game end? It was by one touchdown against the... But was it an interception? Uh, well, yeah, I guess yeah, it, it was. An in the end zone. from Derek Carr. Yeah, in the end zone. Yeah. Six points off of the would-be AFC championship. You know what the Chargers did to the Bengals last year? Mm-hmm. Doubled them up, 44-21. Was that in a regular season a regular game season or was that in a playoff yeah. game? But it was a game they won. Mm. Yeah, well, can't win them all, I guess. No, you can't. Unfortunately. We'll find out who's wearing who's wearing what. There we go. I'm down. This. I'm down with it. it. Works for me. Thank you very much, man. Absolutely. Matt Money Smith. It. it was a lot of fun having this chat, guys. We'll check you next week. Cheers. Yeah.